Welcome to my garage. I wanna to talk to you about the differences between portable solar panels and rigid solar panels. Like between this Opus 240 watt foldable solar panel and this HQST 100 watt rigid panel. This is not a review of either panel, just a basic comparison of the two types of panels. This is a 240 watt foldable solar panel with an open circuit voltage of 24.6 and it's waterproof with a rating of IP67. And this is a 100 watt rigid solar panel from HQST with an open voltage of 18.6 volts and a waterproof rating of IP65. The Opus panel just about maxes out the input of my Opus Exodus 1200. I am an Opus fan. Uh, they have a good products and they have a really great community online. So I wanna talk about the differences between these two types of panels and then some specific differences between um, these two panels themselves. Some benefits of portable panels is, well, they're portable. This panel, when it's folded out, is longer than I am tall, but folded up, it's a, around two foot square, and they come with built-in legs that you can fold out and use to adjust it whenever you wanna place it. My rigid panel doesn't have that. Uh, if it's not permanently mounted, I have to find some way to prop it up all the time. It's been raining today, but I quickly wanted to show you the difference in size of the two panels. You can see the foldable panel folds out from around two feet to closer to eight feet. There's a support system for the rigid panel, just a board. It's not pretty, but it works. Both of these panels have the MC4 connectors. The Opus panel has a DC7909 as well. Now some drawbacks of a foldable panel. Well, you know, they are foldable. They do have moving pieces and parts. You see, I have this in here to try to protect it because of the way we're gonna carry it. And you know, eventually these hinges, these snaps, you know, they will, they will fail um, at some point. I mean, just by the fact that we're gonna be moving them some. It may take a long time, but it will happen. Uh, also, uh, people say that if you leave them outside in the heat, especially in the high heat a long time, the, uh, the way that these are made, they may actually begin to deteriorate, become less efficient. And while we're talking about efficiency, generally, at least some of the older ones, maybe newer ones are coming along and more expensive ones are getting better, but they're not as efficient in converting solar energy into electrical energy as a rigid panel. Rigid panels have historically been considered to be more efficient. Uh, there's a lot of ways that you can make them more efficient. You know, they have the mono and the poly crystalline structure, and I'm not even gonna get into bifacial panels and all that kind of stuff. But over, you know, time, it's been thought that they were way more efficient at uh, kind of converting sunlight into energy. Lately, there've been some portable panels that have claimed to match the conversion efficiency, that is the amount of sunlight converted to energy. The HQST panel claims an efficiency of 22 to 23%. The Opus panel claims a conversion efficiency of up to 21%. So it's actually fairly close, just a percentage or two off. It is crazy to me to think that after decades of advancement in solar technology, we still can't convert 25% of the sun's energy into electrical power. There's a theory by people whose names I can't pronounce. Shockley Kweiser? Kweiser? Shockley Kweiser? They theorize that with current technology that the maximum possible sunlight conversion rate that we will ever reach is 33.7%. To go beyond that, we'll have to do something else. But who knows what might happen in the future? That's just where we are right now. Another benefit of rigid solar panels is that generally they're cheaper. There's a reason that my first solar panel was a rigid solar panel. I found it on sale at a good price. I didn't need a panel that was supposed to be mounted somewhere. Actually, a portable one would have been better for what I needed it and were using it for and have been using this one for, but it was cheaper to get and I was just getting into it. This particular panel, whenever it's not on sale, runs around $80. To get an equivalent HQST 100 watt foldable portable panel, you're gonna spend around $110. Now you can always shop sales, get things at different prices, and as always, read the reviews, make sure you know what you're buying before you get into it. One of the drawbacks of a rigid panel is that they're heavier in general than the portable panels. This HQST panel weighs 15.7 pounds. So whenever you put two of them together to get 200 watts, you're gonna be carrying 30 pounds, more than 30 pounds of panel around, versus the 240 watt Opus panel that only weighs 18 pounds total for 240 watts. 
Another drawback of a rigid panel is that they have to be mounted, which means you may stray into code issues. Many locations don't allow you to mount these onto your home without a permit, and they don't come with built-in legs or even mounting hardware. I bought this hardware right here for a future project. Now, most of the time you can mount these on racks in your yard or outbuildings like a shed or maybe a deck cover like a pergola that's not attached to your house, but you're gonna to wanna to check your local codes and you're definitely gonna check your HOA agreements if you have those. So when do you use which kind? Well, as always, you wanna do your own research. You wanna make sure that the open voltage and the wattage and the amperage, all that stuff works with your needs for your system. For portable panels, there's really a couple of areas, a couple of times whenever you wanna use them, whenever you are needing something that you can carry with you, obviously, or you need something you can put up and take down in a temporary setting. So if you need to take it with you, we're talking car camping, tent camping, you're at a, baseball game and need to charge something, anything that you need to have solar converted power away from a home or a dwelling or a camper where you could permanently mount a rigid panel, that's whenever a portable solar panel would actually be a really good option for you. In addition, sometimes you just need a panel up for a little bit of time. If you have homeowners association agreements and you can't mount permanently, solar panels on your house or you maybe you are in an apartment and you have a balcony and you're not allowed to mount a panel out there but you could set up a portable panel for an afternoon to get some sun and charge your devices so anything where it's temporary anything obviously where you need to carry it that's whenever you probably need a portable panel and for rigid panels, really the kind of things you're gonna be looking at is long-term application and if you have significant cost considerations. So long-term, obviously, if you're gonna mount this somewhere outside and leave it you know, quasi-permanently, that's when you would go for a rigid, less expensive you know, kind of option that's designed to be outside all the time um, without failing for years and years. Also, if cost is a consideration, I mean, you can start out with a 40 or 50 watt panel. I've seen those for less than $40 just as a list price. You can look around and find some of these uh, much less expensive. If you're looking at larger wattage panels, like, you know, a couple hundred watts, you know, 400 watts, um, most of the time a rigid panel is cheaper than a, you know, more uh, powerful foldable panel. And so those are kind of the differences between these two types of panels, the portable panel and the rigid panel. This particular rigid panel is actually probably, this may be the last time that you see it not mounted to something. I finally got a project that I'm going to end up using it and permanently installing it somewhere. And so we'll talk more about that. But that's kind of what we have here with uh, you know, the different kinds of panels. If you have any questions or if you have any ideas about maybe some applications that I didn't talk about, because I'm sure there are many, many ways that you could use both of these kinds of panels and some other things, like I didn't get really deep into this. Go ahead and post those in the comments below and uh, I'll see you next time.